Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the ISDT parallel charging board. Now, this is my first parallel charging board just because I was always afraid of them because I've had a couple close calls just with chargers without even a parallel charging board. However, lately I've been getting a little bit annoyed of charging every single battery, so I decided to take the plunge and I picked up this ISDT one. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take it apart together, take a look at the board here and see what's inside and see how well it's executed and if I really want to use this or not. So if anyone just wanted to see if this board was any good, we can go ahead and take a look at it together. So first of all, they do provide you with everything you need here. So, I mean, this is how it comes pretty basic and pretty stock, a parallel charging board. Now we do have an LED here, which gives us the status that something is, some electricity is going through. As soon as you plug in your first battery, that LED will light up telling you that there is still something connected, but it doesn't have anything uh, smart about it. It's just a single colored LED here. Now, if we take a look here, also we get the balance port connectors, which is JST. They're silicone, really nice and pretty long. So that's also a huge plus here. So this I like. Uh, we do have the XC60 connector, which would be, this is I think the, f the male. Uh, which would go into your charger so it could output 50 amps. Now this is rated for 50 amps and the limiting factor is this uh, fuse right here. So they're using these car fuses. However, you cannot remove this one and I'll show you why in a little bit. But you can replace it, but you just can't remove it with your hand. And uh, we'll take a look in that. So as you can tell, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six. It takes up to six lipos in here, which is pretty nice. And also if you don't know how to use parallel charging boards, I highly recommend you go ahead and uh, look up online how to use one. And also do not, do not, I repeat, do not mix and match uh, sized batteries. For example, a 2000 milliamp and a 1500 milliamp. And do not also mix and match the S rating. So if it's a 3S, don't put 3S with 4S. So just put here, if you had just have three, you know, 4S 1500 milliamp batteries, that's what you put here. You just put those three. That's it. And you also want to make sure they're in the same voltage range. So, you know, they're all, let's just say one of them is 3.8 and then the other two is 4.1. Uh, uh, don't, don't charge like that. That's not really good. But what you can do is they should all be on the same level. You could install them all together here without plugging this guy in. Leave it depending, 30 minutes, an hour, uh, sometimes, and it, they'll all balance themselves out and they'll be exactly just about equal. Like I did that the other day, I plugged them in just to test it and then they all equaled out to 4.01 at the end. And then now I can go ahead and stick it in my charger and charge it. So I don't have to, you know, charge one by one this way, you know, if I had like 20 minutes to spare, I plug them here and they should equalize. All of them will just start, you know, balancing each other, which is really nice to do right before you charge. So that's something that's very important you should take note of and also do your research. Now on the board it's rated up to 40 amps but the limiting factor is a 50 amp uh, fuse here. So I'm guessing the, the overall uh, board design and the size of the traces on the board here are not going to withstand more than 40 amps and that's why they put a 50 amp fuse there. So let's open this guy up and just take a look inside. By the way, if you're curious about the mat that I'm using, I'll leave it linked down below. This thing is an absolute beast. I mean, it's just, it's it's really nice to look at. And it's really easy to clean too, uh, which I really love. So I just, you know, just some alcohol and a little towel and then just wipe it off and it's brand new again. So let's remove this, just four screws and we, we go ahead and remove this thing here. And let's pull the board out, there we go. So immediately what I can already tell is that they're using non-lead solder so they can be compliant with the eu regulations and other country regulations so that's you could immediately see that from the uh color of the solder basically here we have a little resistor for that little led there it's not a smart led it's just a one color led just to tell you there's something going on in here so that's um that's why that's there and uh if you can tell here's the fuse now the fuse i, I thought there would, there would be a little holder inside and it was just very hard to yank it out but it's actually soldered on to the board here so I mean you can you see that right there so that's soldered on so if you ever pop the fuse good thing you could just easily remove it and it's not some type of proprietary fuse in some way so you can find these anywhere gas stations whatever uh, but you would have to solder it back on and desolder this so theoretically if you know some kind of a short circuit happened now you have to also take this into consideration you had some sort of short circuit going on I think this is going through the positive so it would go through the positive pop here and then go to the positive rail here. And that is what's connecting the positive voltage. It could be negative also, but I'm pretty sure it's positive here. And when something happens over 50 volts in here, 
that will break, but it will only break the income of the, uh, the, 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 the power that's going into the board. But if two of these shorted, they're just going to stay shorting out until they burn out the traces. Now, the trace looks pretty massive, uh, which is something really good to see here for the positive and negative. They're about that big of copper right here. So that's really nice. And these don't need to be very big because they're just balancing. They're just reading the input so you know what voltage. So your charger knows how to charge correctly, uh, if you might say. And um, overall, the board looks good. I don't remember how much it costs. I think it's around 20 bucks or so. But overall, it looks nice. Um, I really wish there was a fuse between each one of these. But, uh, you know, I can't complain right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and test this guy. I've actually already started using him. And uh, I just really wanted to take it apart and just uh, take it apart and have you guys look at it. See if anyone would be interested in it. And you can go ahead and pick one up. So overall, board design looks minimal. I mean, it's just the basic of a, you know, parallel charging board. It does have the fuse right here, which is a really nice addition. It's actually kind of a must. And I guess you can even increase its size also. So we do also do have another output here, which is pretty crazy. And we also have these bullet connectors. So you can hook up even more boards together. But the limiting factor, I think, would still be 50 current max because of this fuse. So if you have 50 amps here and 50 amps there for some reason, uh, you would go through here. And then if that hit, you know, 60 amps, that fuse is just going to pop. And then there's no more electricity going to the other boards that you have connected in parallel with it or in series. I don't know what you would call this currently, but I think parallel possibly. But yeah, overall, it looks pretty nice. I think it'll get the job done. Uh, just be very careful with these. These are, you know, you just have to do your research and just be extra cautious when you use parallel charging boards. I was always afraid of them. Well, that's going to include it for my video review of the ISD parallel charging board. Looks decent quality, looks good. And uh, I've used it a couple times and I'll be using it over the next couple days and I'll probably pick up a couple more and check them out. But overall, seems decent. Has some safety features built in. Not as much as I'd like, but at least it's something and that's gonna conclude it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys